My name is Kate McGoy-Smith, and I'm with ForkSmart.org. ForkSmart is rooted in gratitude and passion by the power of loving yourself well. And in order to do that, to love ourselves well, we talk about the value of eating whole, whole plant-based foods, moving often, creating calm, and cultivating compassion. And today I wanted to talk to you about a topic that I've been approached by many people about, and that is the way I have helped reverse my own idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension. And one of the key elements is eating greens. So I wanna to talk to you today about eating six greens a day to keep your disease at bay and even make it go away. So I want to um, get started right away. Uh, I was diagnosed on December 20th of 2007 following a right heart catheterization in which they discovered I have a very rare disease that only affects two to four in a million. It's called idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension. So it's a localized hypertension in the pulmonary arteries of the lungs. And with it comes very low blood pressure, fainting spells, dizziness, shortness of breath, uh, lower leg and abdominal swelling. And um, after following a right heart catheterization, I was put on a level one drug, even though my disease was probably at a level three to three and a half out of four. This is a disease that's very progressive in nature, and I was only given two to five years to live. And so I tried my very best. I had promised my children two things when I was diagnosed. While they didn't know the prognosis of my diagnosis, they knew and could see that I was quite sick. And I said to them, there are two things that I will do. One, I will try to take worry away from you. And what I mean by that is I will work as hard as possible to make myself as well as possible. And that's my commitment to you. I, you will never find that I will give up um, or give in. And the second is that I have to find a way to make a contribution to the world because I still have that responsibility no matter what I'm facing myself. And so I'm trying to still live up to those two things and um, and this is part of my agreement with my children. And that's why I'm here today with you. And I wanted to talk to you about six greens to keep your disease at bay or even make it go away. So I was um, found that once I was diagnosed, I was put on level one drugs, despite my being at a level three to three and a half out of four. And in addition to that, Within months, I was put on oxygen 24 hours a day, as well as I ended up becoming blind as a result of a lack of oxygen to my eyes, the heavy duty drugs that I was on for my pulmonary arterial hypertension, and the fact that I had diabetes as well, which I eventually, I was diagnosed just prior to this diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension with type two diabetes and ended up finally having to be on insulin to stabilize my blood sugars. And so um, one night I happened to be watching television or hearing it and George Stopanopoulos came on and said that he had seen the documentary Forks Over Knives and it changed his life. He said, it just might change yours. So I was totally intrigued. And I went about trying to find out what this Forks Over Knives was all about. I did eventually be able to, about a year later, go to a movie theater and hear it. Um, and I was so moved by it that I went back twice more. I had to climb up two flights of stairs with any of you who know, carrying a heavy canister of oxygen and being blind is kind of like climbing Mount Everest, but it was well worth it because there I met on screen, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, and of course, T. Colin Campbell. But it was what Dr. Esselstyn said that particularly intrigued me. He talked about the endothelium cells. The, this is the innermost lining 
of the all our blood vessels and arteries. And we have something like 60,000 blood vessels and arteries from the top of our head to the tip of our toes. And in his conversation, he talked about the endothelium being the life jackets of our, our body because they produce something called nitric oxide. And nitric oxide was found to be this molecular gas that allowed our body, our blood vessels to vasodilate. And so that's very important because we want that dilation, especially if you think about it when we're walking up the stairs, we want our, our, our blood vessels to dilate so that they can flow more oxygen loaded blood into parts of our body. And um, so as a result, I began, I wrote to him and asked him because I had severe right-sided heart failure. And he has been a surgeon at the Cleveland Clinic for well over 30 years, headed the breast, breast task force, and was head of um, parathyroid and thyroid surgery. And in his later years as a surgeon, he wanted to look at a project to take on. And while cancer was so huge, that he felt that would be a really difficult project for him to get his head and ha hands around, uh, is that he then took on heart disease. And he began by doing an international review and finding there were certain patterns of foods and behaviors that had populations in the world much healthier than others. And he started with 24 patients, and these were considered the walking dead. And he met with them, um, and these were people that cardiologists had said, I'm sorry, there's nothing more we can do. You've had your first bypass, your second bypass, stints. We can't do anything else. And of the 24, five were actually told they were not likely to live past the next year and to kind of get their, their life in order and enjoy whatever life they could. And so he took that on. Behind his back, medical establishment called him Dr. Sprouts because what he found was he wanted to look at how nutritional therapy could be of help to his patients. And he was particularly impressed with the, an oil-free, whole plant-based diet, which was made up of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. And... Um, very sparingly any nuts or avocados or seeds. And in fact, for his severe heart patients, he would say, don't have any of these as well, because they, while they're high in nutrient, they're very, also very, very high in fat. And so, and one of the things that he also found is he wanted to increase people's nitric oxide. And way to do that was through greens, because what happens is when you chew nitrates like kale, bok choy, cauliflower, broccoli, parsley, mustard greens, beets, beet greens, collard greens, napa cabbage, uh, bok choy, all of these whole uh, spinach, all these wonderful, wonderful greens, is that they turn into, through our stomach, juices and everything go from um, nitrates to nitrites and nitrites then are in, once in the gastric system form into nitric oxide and in fact any that are not converted will go back up into our saliva and 10 to 20 fold will surround the next bites of food we have and create more nitric oxide. So we get twice the benefit every time we chew our greens. And so many people say to me, how do I follow Dr. Esselstyn's suggestion of eating six greens a day? How did you do it, Kate? Like, that sounds crazy. Like, I don't eat that much. Well, he talks about having a fistful of greens, which is about equivalent to one cup. Now, believe it or not, raw, you know, if you pack one cup, it doesn't actually seem that big, especially when you take that cup and then steam it. It's actually a fairly small amount. 
and we can eat it in a lot of different ways. So I'm going to go through some of the greens. I've got them on hand here, and I'm going to go through them with you just to give you some ideas of what you can do with them. I'm not going to do all the chopping and peeling or anything like that, um, because I think that you, you can imagine how to do that. But we'll just talk about how do we get them sort of disguised and on our plate without us noticing it too much. Um, and I know that that might seem a leap for some of you because in North America, would you believe one of the number one vegetables is um, ketchup. So we've, we've really processed our vegetables. We, we really are not that fond of them and we really need to have a new introduction. Uh, need to start dating them again, uh, discover how variety, how much variety they have, how delicious they can taste, and so much more is what they can do for our body. Because there we have that 60,000 miles of blood vessels of arteries from the top of our head to the tip of our toes. And if we can produce like nitric oxide, we can vasodilate and it actually helps our blood flow like water rather than molasses. It helps prevent the stickiness because we naturally produce cholesterol. So we don't need to add any extra fat to our bodies or anything because we naturally produce it. And there's natural fat in things like beans and other uh, items that are actually but wrapped in fiber, just like sugar when it's wrapped in fiber in a fruit, um, we can absorb it and we can process it much better without causing our body harm. So let's start with something that is very pretty and attractive, and that is the beet. So with the beet, you can actually right from the stem right to the end of the bulb, you can eat everything on here. You can chop the stem very fine and have it nice and add an extra crunch feel. Believe it or not, we have a mouth desire for crunchy things. That's why maybe you're drawn toward potato chips, including the, the salt and the sugar. But we love crunch. Uh, these are wonderful just in a salad. Um, you can also steam them and you can put them, line them in a soup bowl and eat them that way. You can um, cut off the ends here and then steam this and then peel. This just peels very naturally off and you can um, uh, slice it and put it in something like a flavored vinegar. I particularly like the Cara Cara vanilla orange and I just preserve them in a mason jar like that and I can have sort of pickled without the salt. Um, nice beets that way. They're wonderful on topping on a salad. You can also put this, use a spiralizer, which is a machine that has a, a crank on one end and a blade, and it will come out in different shapes. And so this makes a wonderful um, spiralized kind of salad that you can put on top as well. So beets are wonderful by way of nitric oxide. They are our friend. So I would encourage that. Another one is um, kale. So kale gets, um, these are two different kinds of kale. One's a very curly kale, one's a flatter kale, a, a darker dragon kind of kale. And you can easily, with kale, um, you can strip it by just holding one branch and just pulling it and you can get off the greens. So for example, this kind of kale, what I would do is you can chop it up into part of a nice salad, but you can also really massage it really well after you've washed it and everything. And then I put nutritional yeast, um, onion powder instead of onion salt, and um, garlic powder. And you can actually make kale chips out of this, just on parchment paper lined cookie sheets into your uh, oven and bake it and it makes wonderful kale chips and when you massage it it really goes all those seasonings go into it more and it's softer as well and so that's a, a really delicious flavor bonus and this kale can be just sliced up and uh, it has I mean see how nice deep dark and rich and green it is you can also cut it into ribbons and make that into a different kind of salad shape 
we always, you know, when we're talking about people who, let's say, if you want to lose some weight, and we also, or you want to really have a filling and satisfying meal, if we talk about sequenced eating, starting with your soups and salads, so they become a really wonderful foundation because not only they are packed with the nutrients, but they're low in calories. So you're really filling up on something so that you walk away from the table feeling satisfied and not hungry in an hour from now. Another wonderful one is something like this. This is a Chinese bok choy and it is lovely. I just will sometimes just cut off this part and cut it into wedges and steam it and have it as a part of a, a stir fry. Um, you can, or you can just totally chop it up and put it part of your salad. Or you can actually break it off. It has a really nice crispy, it's great for a dip. And to just dip it in these small, especially the baby bok choy, like just dip it like that and uh, make that your sort of chip. And so that's really uh, wonderful and delicious. Another one I really like is part of sort of a stir fry version is that you can actually make a cup right out of this Napa cabbage. You can see it's all sort of wrinkly and everything. It has a really nice, you can kind of hear the texture of it, but it's lovely chopped up um, and you can chop that in chunks or ribbons, uh, but you could also use this as a bowl and then add your rice and your different mixed vegetables right in here. And then you could actually eat your, eat your dishes and enjoy that as well. You could also, um, stuff this with a cauliflower rice mixture um, a, and then make it into cabbage rolls and do that as well and benefit that way. And speaking of, this is a wonderful vegetable. It's so versatile. We can do so many things with it. And again, increases nitric oxide. But um, this can be taken if you go to your food processor, put in an S blade, and you can grind this down to a cauliflower rice. And so, and I mix that with um, some taco seasonings and I bake it in the oven and it becomes my taco filling. And then, as I mentioned about the cabbage rolls, I can mix it with rice and I will either stuff it in a cabbage roll or stuff it into a red pepper and put some tomato sauce on top. Believe it or not, it tastes absolutely wonderful. It tastes so good, you will not miss the meat. Um, another thing that you can do with cauliflower is it comes with these natural kind of breakable apart um, stems. And so you can make buffalo wings. Uh, yes, seasoned cauliflower buffalo wings are possible with this. And they can be just baked on a parchment lined baking sheet and um, with all the different sauces and um, seasonings. And remember, your seasoning are going from salt seasonings to powder seasonings. So you get all the powder, uh, the, all the flavor from those powders, but without the salt and the, the harm that that salt does with regard to increasing blood pressure, et cetera. Another thing you can do is slice these and make cauliflower steaks. And one of the books that I refer to as a kind of a foundation piece for me for when I was starting out um, was um, this wonderful book by Anne, Essel Anne Krell Esselstyn and Jane Esselstyn, The Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook that is really excellent and it's got colored recipes in here with different ideas for you of what to make and very easy to find um, store uh, on grocery store shelves. So it's wonderful shopping that way. Another one that I really uh, love and it's a Christmas favorite that always is on our Christmas is asparagus. And asparagus is so lovely, you know, right from the stem. And just a natural thing is to just break it at its natural stem so you get its full freshness. So you don't have that woody stem at the end and you don't chop it. You just use your finger and snap where it naturally comes off. And these are great to, um, people like to, um, have these on crackers uh, once they're cooked 
They can put them in soups, make it, a, I've made asparagus soup before. Um, what else can you do? Just, there's a wonderful, simple sort of raspberry sauce that you can put on steamed asparagus. It's just fresh raspberries with a tiny touch of um, maple syrup and it tastes absolutely delicious. And um, this asparagus is also wonderful on pizza. So using a whole wheat, oil-free uh, pita pizza. And, uh, and then another thing that you can do is with that pizza, I'm gonna pull out my, one of my favorite greens of all time, because it's the highest on the nitric oxide list, is arugula. Arugula is a very simple leaf um, that is very peppery in nature and it has a really delicious taste. You don't have to break the stems or anything. You just eat the entire leaf like that. And you can steam this and, for example, put it on top of pizza, on um, your tomato sauce, and it adds a, a really lovely flavor. Or right in the actual tomato pizza sauce, you can uh, steam this and put it in so that you almost don't even notice it's there. And it's also wonderful just with regular tomato sauce when you're making a pasta dish, a whole wheat pasta dish. Ah, collard greens. These are the, the burritos of the, the green world. Because these wonderful, you can see how nice and big and floppy these leaves are and they're really quite strong yet what you can do is just steam them you can take that little ridge slice cut that down just a little so it's a little smoother and not quite as hard and then this makes a lovely folds over so beautifully to make can you imagine stuffing your rice and beans in there and baking that um, and there you have your burrito right there and it's just perfect and uh, it's wonderful again for people who are for example do have a uh, gluten intolerance so that's a perfect and this is a very healthy diet for them they're not buying a lot of processed foods that are really high in sugar and salt and fat cauliflower this is our medley of trees and uh, you can have this as a raw dip for example you can steam this um, you can put it in a lasagna, a vegetable lasagna, nicely fresh cooked um, cauliflower, or sorry, bro broccoli. And uh, it's a neighbor of cauliflower. And so you can have that in a variety of ways and really enjoy it. And again, wonderful as a stir fry as well. Or um, if you want, you could make a cheese sauce, and there are really simple cheese sauce recipes using potatoes and carrots, just as simple as that. And um, if you're looking for particular recipes that are low in salt, but also are whole plant-based, I do submit and have contributed to phacanada.com, their low sodium recipes, and look out for them and see. Because, for example, the cauliflower, I have made um, out of cauliflower a wonderful tomato basil soup a whole, with a whole cauliflower. And lining your soup bowl with greens is a great way to just not even notice the greens are in them. And so, and then another one of my favorites is sort of a Caesar salad with, but hold all the eggs and anchovies and everything, but it's wonderful. And you can also get the romaine hearts and use those as dippers for things as well. But you can um, slice this in ribbons or break it and tear it and have it as a Caesar salad. So there are, are wonderful dressings that are oil free. And what's great is not only books like the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook, but just going Googling online and looking for and putting in whole food plant-based recipes um, and find, discover all the wonderful and unique recipes that you can do. Because with we have so much variety. When your plate is full of 
fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. And we have more than 101 legumes. But our veg, you can imagine, we can green our plates so easily. So starting at breakfast, what I might do is I will just use a handful, a fistful of arugula, which is equivalent to about a cup. When I've talked to Dr. Esselstyn, a cup is about what we're talking about. And I can just put those on my dinner plate and, um, and I just put them on the dinner plate. And I certainly have more than that, but on the dinner plate and I've just put them in the microwave, steam them and I put a little bit of nutritional yeast on, or you could use even a flavored vinegar and you get to enjoy those very much. And I just have them on the side with, I have oatmeal and blueberries usually, that's kind of my go-to breakfast that I grab in the morning. And then at um, lunchtime, I could have greens in a salad, um, I could have greens in a sandwich, I could have greens line my soup bowl. So I could do a number of things, I could have greens line a stir fry. So I could do a number of things like that. And then for dinner, same kind of thing. You know, um, whatever, you know, if I wanted to have a lasagna, I could have a, a broccoli in my lasagna and greens kind of in the sauce. So I could add those greens in addition to all the other wonderful foods that I'm eating. In between times, that's where you can have a smaller little salad. Um, you could just have your plate of steam greens. I think um, uh, there's been some jokes about um, uh, a comedian who recently is just eating his greens with nutritional yeast. <laughs> and and uh, so, you know, there's a lot of creative ways that you can have them. And so Dr. Esselstyn would recommend that when you have them six times a day, you're having them at each of your meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and in between, between breakfast and lunch, and between lunch and dinner. And he would love, 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 love if you also had it at dinner, at bedtime. And so those greens really help produce that nitric oxide. And we, you know, when we look at the health benefits, when we did a health economics kind of look at this, my medication for my idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, which was all about vasodilating my blood vessels to be able to get my blood to flow easier, um, is that uh, I was spending, having to spend every, anywhere between 3,000 a month to 100,000 a year. And now, just with these kind of wonderful array of greens, um, is that it's about $5 a day. Big difference without any of the side effects. Well, unless you want to call the up effects, I'd say, of lowering your blood pressure. Um, get, I got off oxygen as a result. I got my eyesight back. Um, being able to have more energy. I sort of talk about that energy as people have a hard time to imagine it, especially if you've been fatigued for a long time. Uh, it, that kind of fatigue of where you're on kind of walking knee length in water and you just feel like how, you know, you're not getting very far. And, uh, and you know how much better it is when you finally reach the sand and you, the shoreline and you can, ah, oh, I feel the freedom. I can walk so much better. Well, I say it's like going into a shoe store at four in the afternoon when your feet are really swollen and you know that's the best time to buy shoes so that they'll fit you right from morning to night, um, is that when you put on that new pair of running shoes, you feel kind of a spring in your step. You feel a new sense of energy and yet it's only been a number of minutes. You haven't lost any weight. Uh, you didn't have a power nap in between and suddenly you feel like that spring in your step. And that's, in all honesty, how I feel eating this way. I would not want to go back because I feel lighter. Um, you're getting lots of, with all of these wonderful things like the Napa cabbage, um, the romaine lettuce, the cauliflower, the kale, um, all of these wonderful things, another kind of kale, um, you are getting um all of this wonderful fiber as well so your elimination process is really 
excellent. You, you feel lighter all the time. And you're also producing so much more nitric oxide so that, you know, when you get your blood to flow like water rather than being that sluggish um, sludge um, that happens when plaque gets all sticky and it starts to adhere to the walls of the, of the lining of your endothelium and your vasodilation is getting narrower and narrower rather than bigger and bigger, you know, you feel the difference in that energy and vitality you have. So I welcome you to try six screens a day to keep your disease at bay and even make it go away. And I know that I was able to go from a level three, three and a half to a level one. And I'm now, and that's without my pH medication, I'm off that. And for about $5 a day, I am eating a field of greens and enjoying it. And remember, they can be camouflaged so that you just remember that as you eat each bite, you are helping your body to heal because it has a desire. It's like putting water on the inflammation. It's putting wa water on that fire and it can, there's no morbidity, there's no risk. And if anyone who is on blood thinners is concerned because they've been told not to eat greens, remember, this is always done. Any change like this is always done in partnership with your medical team. Talk to them, let them know what you wanna do. Explain that the research behind it. You can refer to Dr. Esselstyn's book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, and so that they know that this is evidence-based science, not some recent fad. And so I continue to wish you the very best on your journey because that's what's so important. We want to help fuel you on your way because health is a never-ending journey. So take care and uh, 